Starting off making the whole wheat from the approachable loaf from Unsifted's recipe and words. Basically it's from the, uh, the bread lab and they are using 100% whole wheat to make different things because they're, you'll see, I'll put a link to this and here they talk about how to make the sourdough starter, everything pretty much, but they like to use uh, unsifted whole wheat flour and different kinds have different uh, ratios of bran and all that stuff. They like the whole thing. So here we go, you're gonna zero it out, but this is the same process to make all the breads I make, uh, all the pizza doughs, all that stuff. So we're gonna start off with basically, in this case, we're using Heineken just to start off as the water base for it. This is just a trial to see if this gives it a better flavor. It did on the other breads, so we're gonna try it with a whole wheat as well too. So we got 355 grams there. It's got 355 grams. It's just room temperature Heineken. And we'll see what we get out of here. About 700 grams, that's about, that's good. Next goes in the starter. I've got two starters here. Just use whatever starter you have. This one's grown with whole wheat here in Prosper, Texas. This one's grown this is the 1847 from the sourdough starter, the 1847 foundation, Carl's starter from the Oregon Trail. So it's a beast. It also has another mystery starter in there. So you can grow your own, just get some from someone else. So in this case, we're looking at, I'm saying 273, a cup of starter. So I'm gonna use basically all of it from each side. So I'm gonna zero this out. Again, don't do mixing on your stand unless you want to destroy your stand so it's uh they're saying 273 grams of starter i'm just going to use as much as i can from this again it's a very forgiving dough that there's about 124 and you want to leave a couple of tablespoons of starter in here for when you mix it up and feed it so i'm going to feed it here in just a little bit do not mix your spoons into different ones otherwise you'll cross culture them and you won't have a pure starter this one's grown with whole wheat dough so I'm gonna you get some of that out. It's a little stiffer, but again, you wanna make sure it's fed and ready to go. So we'll jump that in. That's about 212, a little bit more. So a couple tablespoons left in there. Again, billions of bacteria and yeast in there. So they'll be ready to eat here in just a second when I feed them and keep those separated. Uh, we got about a couple tablespoons, 45 grams of honey. So zero that out. And this will, it's basically going to break the dough up, make it soft, make it a little sweet. I'm going to use this for pizza and for bread. So there's about 40 grams ish. And that's next is uh, oil, uh, 45 grams of honey, 45 grams of oil, 40 grams ish. So here's about 40 grams of olive oil coming in. And again, this will make it soft and give it flavor. So it breaks down the gluten strands. And last but not least, well, we'll throw in our whole wheat flour. So whole wheat flour looks like about 773 grams unsifted whole wheat flour. You wanna get all the stuff you can there. So zero it out, let's do that. Come on, zero, there you go. And almost made a mistake there. So let's do just what I said. All right, so we'll mix this up first, again, off the scale, so it doesn't destroy your scale. And then we'll put it back on, zero it out. There we go, if you can see that. Zero it out, and now add 773 grams-ish of whole wheat flour. So, it's gonna be a whole bunch of this. You know what? I'm just going to dump it in here. There's no need to be all slow about this. 700 grams of whole wheat flour. I got 150 in there now. Should be. Yes, I know Bella. She's hungry. So all whole wheat in this one. 600. 750 ish. That's good enough. And last but not least, zero that out. And salt, we got about 20 grams of salt. In this case, it's a pretty big dough. So zero it out, and about 23 grams of salt. Done, that's all the ingredients. Let's move this over, mix this up with the, till it's a shaggy dough, cover it, let it sit for an hour. 
mix it up again with a dough scraper and then see if I can get into a ball and then let it sit for four or five, six hours while it rises. And then put, once it's risen, kind of puffy, we'll put it in the fridge and let it sit for at least two days. I try to sit it for five days to where it tastes awesome. All the different flavors come together when you cold ferment. And that'll be the next step. All right, this is coming together in a nice shaggy ball. I know that. Seems to get fed here. So that's what it's going to look like for a bit. All shaggy. And then uh, cover it up. And in a little bit, I'll show you when I use the uh, dough scraper to get it going and get it into kind of a big ball to ferment. All right. It's been about an hour. This is not stretch and fold, basically. All you're doing is turning the dough back in onto itself and getting it basically into a cohesive mass, kind of round. You can pull it like that. It's, you're just basically trying to mix it up a little bit more. This is one method. This is all you really need to do. Once you're done with this, then you can let it ferment for the rest of the day, you know, however long. If your uh, sourdough starter is not fresh, then it needs to ferment just a little longer. You know, it can go 10, 12 hours or so, just till it gets puffy. If your starter is really ready, then you can go in, you know, four or five, six hours. This is the alternate method. I have a silpat. They're also useful for this, or it doesn't slide. So this is the alternate method. No dough or no, no flour on here. Just dump the stuff out onto here. And this is the same method I use when I'm tightening up a bull to cook. So basically you pull this over onto itself. It's just a shaggy mass right now. Pull it kind of onto itself. Take the whole thing, turn it over. Don't worry about it if it sticks. And now you're just gonna tighten it up. Uh, it smells really good actually. And so all I'm doing is tightening it up using the surface tension of the cutting board to pull it into a ball. As you can see, that's kind of the thing we do. If your dough is falling or if it's if you fermented it and your dough kind of flattens out like a pancake, this is what you're going to do to keep it get nice and high. Now, if you've over, over fermented it, it's still great for pizza. Still, it'll still taste good. It just won't be all high and pretty like this. So anyway, get into a thing like this. And I'm just going to dump it back into the uh, bowl here and then cover it, and let it rise and get puffy. So again, all it is is just a method to get it puffy. All right, getting the dough out. We're gonna let this proof or rise a little bit more. It's been in the fridge for five days to get that great flavor to it. So we're gonna powder, all right, flour this. Won't hurt if any flour gets in, it'll absorb. So flour your basket, it's called a banneton. The banneton gives it like the spiral shape so it makes it look pretty. So we're only gonna use half this dough in the banneton, the other half into a loaf pan. Where are we? Yeah, that'll be fine. So we're gonna let this rise. So I'm slicing this out, just getting a section of it out, trying not to puncture and get all the air bubbles out. So that's out. Now to shape it a bit, take this off of here and I'm gonna pull it again, just like earlier, pull it onto itself. There's some good air bubbles in there. Pull it back. There's a lot of people that do stretch and folds. So kind of pull it tight, get the seam there. It's a lot more cohesive as you can see. Now I'll just tighten it up. And that just tightens the outside of it. And we'll get that seam out of there. I don't want to do too much. Now I'll take this, put it into this flower banneton. Seam side up. Won't hurt to adjust it. And then cover the banneton for a while. Let this rise a little bit more and get kind of to room temperature. And it'll puff up a little bit more. The other one I'm doing is into the loaf pan. We'll see how this works. Sometimes the whole wheat structure itself does not lend itself to puffing up. So I'm going to put it into here, let it shape out and rise in the pan and let it do its thing.
So I'll cover this here with some stretch tight and see how it does. It should get puffy before we put it into the oven. The other question is how do you cut this into a circle without just freehanding a circle, which most people can't do. I can't. So real simple, take the parchment paper. We're gonna use a little calculus on this where it's split into not infinite pieces, but pretty close. Just keep folding it over a couple times. Doesn't have to be perfect. Fold it over to where it's about pretty sharp like that. Now, I already measured this out. This is my uh, lom, bread lom. And I've already measured that out to see how long it needs to be. And so for the stop, it's that long. For the emile, or emile, it's that long. So I'm just gonna cut it like this. And there you have an approximate circle that fits exactly into the bottom of the uh, Dutch oven. All right, when we go to cook this, I'm gonna keep the separate lid and the pot. They say to preheat it to 500 degrees for like an hour. Well, that's what you have the lid on top. The inside doesn't get as hot. Well, just leave it open. It'll get to 500 degrees. This is in here just to have a place so the uh, loaf pan, it, if it spills over, it won't hit the bottom of the, the oven. So let's start this off. Bake 500. All right, yes, yeah, shut the door. All right, so that'll get started. And this time now I'm gonna uh, shape the loaf or both loaves and you'll see how that's done. All right, whole wheat beer bread out of, it's been proofing for a little bit, it's puffed up a little bit. And basically I've learned the trick to keep it together. This is not as, what's the word? The whole wheat kind of slices through the gluten strands so it won't puff up as high, but we'll try to do what we can. So pull it out of this banneton, kind of pull it together on this section here and then flip it out and it should release, but sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good release. I did not flour it enough in the end, but that's okay. Uh, it'll still taste good. We'll still get it all done in the center here. So basically when you got a wet dough like this, you kind of have to work quickly with it. So see how it's all kind of smashed down? I'm kind of pushing in on the edges like that to get it kind of puffed up and we'll see it take shape. So now I can kind of do it. You're going to feel for it. Just take practice. Your first ones will be flat like pancakes, but eventually you can get it to where it will have that nice oven spring. All right, put it onto the parchment. Like that. I can still do a little bit of shaping. You got the tension on it. And that's what's gonna give it the oven spring. The tension, the high heat in the beginning. The thing's been heating. It just got to 500. Now take the lam. I learned it's not lame, it's a lam. Make a slice across the top, kind of quick. And then in order to do the little wheat things, you just kind of do a little bit of this. Don't cut too deep. Another wheat stalk over here, let's say like that. And do the little leaves. And the leaves this way. And the end of the wheat stalk. That part right there is what's gonna rise. All right, we'll put this in the oven, into the Dutch oven. I'm gonna take that out of this 500 degree oven and put it in. Show you what's going on. Grab this, place it in the center. Grab the top. Place it. One. All right, we're gonna set 450. 20 minutes. All right, here we go. 20 minutes just went off. I'm gonna take the top off and see how the oven spring is. Yeah. All right, then we're gonna set 400 for another 20 minutes. And then take it out. All right, we'll take this thing on out. Set it on the stove here. And let it cool. 
just so the bottom doesn't burn. And then we'll take a look and see how it turned out once it's cooled. Pretty good. You can see in the middle there, still just a little bit underdone. So I probably need to go to about hmm, two or five, but it smells good. Let's see how this one turned out. This is just in the loaf pan. Let's go across that. Yeah, that one turned out good. A little bit thinner. Of course, it's gonna be cooked better. This one just needs to go, yes, probably about another three or four minutes longer. We got in about 2.05. Something like that. All right, pretty simple. Basic premise for feeding your starter. This is exactly the thing. Zero out your scale. 50 grams of water-ish. At 51. And then mix that up with the starter that's in there. Zero it out. And now throw in 50 grams of in this case, whole wheat flour for this starter I'm feeding. So whole wheat flour, there's about 30, 47-ish, 51, there we go. Mix that up, let it sit at room temperature here till it gets puffy, and then stick it in the fridge. It's good for about one to two weeks, actually, uh, while it ferments and stays alive. The re refrigeration just slows down the fermentation, so, it's still fermenting, it's just at a much slower rate. And you also want to, every once in a while, put some of this out on a dryer, on a sheet, a silpat in the oven. I don't want to grab that because I don't want to introduce foreign bacteria, which I am anyway, just by breathing here. It's going to get wild bacteria and yeast from the area. And that's it. All right, just a quick shot. Once you feed the starters, it's going to look something like this. This is a time lapse over four hours. You see on the right, the 1847 is a beast. Then you'll have some loaves that look like this. One of my first ones. Second one, eh, not bad. Getting a little better. Third one, double loaf. It rose a little bit big, kind of nice. And then the latest one is like this. So that you can make pretty bread as well.